Um, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Meenal Panth and I am a resident of uh, Bay Area. I'm really excited to see a Python conference here. So thank you to the organizers and thank you to the sponsors. Um, so I've been working um, over the last few years with um, Python outreach and um, this talk is uh, just a summary of uh, all the work that I've been doing um, and just to uh, make the audience uh, aware of uh, what is going on, and I'm also hoping I can get some contributions and volunteers um, out of this. So, some background about me. Um, I am a software engineer. I've been working in the industry for about 15 plus years. Um, I recently, um, I'm currently a manager in a company in, in East Bay, and uh, my company makes uh, security equipment. We make baggage scanners for airports. So anytime you guys fly out of uh, SFO or Oakland, your luggage is probably being checked with our scanners. Uh, and I'm proud to say we use Python at work quite a lot. So we are doing uh, using Python for our user interfaces. We use PyQt. And uh, we use Python for all the automation tests that we write. Um, so in, our, in my daily work, I get to uh, work with Python, which is great. Um, apart from my job, I try to um, I try to do some teaching, um, some teaching, some computer science outreach with uh, with children in elementary schools. Um, so how I, how that got started was um, with my two children. I have two boys, and um, it started two years ago when they became uh, when my older son was in third grade, and I thought, okay, let me see what he's learning in school uh, in terms of his computer science curriculum. And um, so what they learn in school today is um, they learn Scratch and they learn some Microsoft products like Word and PowerPoint. Uh, and now they have recently been starting, uh, starting to use Google Docs. Uh, but there is no programming per se. So <clears throat> what I, what, um, when I went to one of the PyCons a few years ago, I um, attended the Young Coders workshop and I also volunteered in that. Um, and I saw these little children, um, you know, working through the through the workshop and getting very excited and getting able to follow follow through. Um, so I took that curriculum, uh, and um, uh, it is an open source curriculum, by the way. So I took that and I uh, took it to the school, my ele uh, the my son's elementary school, uh, but it met with rejection. They were not ready to um, accept that, and I was told that I could do like an after school one one. Um, hour session per week. So I grabbed that opportunity and I started to put together some curriculum uh, for, for uh, the elementary school kids. Um, so initially I took grade three to grade six and I also took some kindergarten children but they were mo mostly focused around Scratch and um, Turtle. Um, the tools that I used were Scratch, Turtle, basic Python idle usage and lately I've started working on with IPython notebook now called Jupyter and Minecraft, which was the most hit uh, for, for them over the last six months. Um, I'm also a STEM advocate at my work, so I try to, uh, we try to hire interns who are in high school, and that's another area where I've been trying to uh, teach high school kids uh, Python. So, so those are the two avenues that I've picked up. So, <clears throat> so one would say, why start, uh, why start this in, in elementary school? What is the need? So, um, so computer science curriculum, like I just said, available at elementary school really scarce. Uh, the children are so curious, but we don't fulfill that curiosity at all. Um, I attended Jessica McKellar's keynote in 2014, um, and she talked about teaching school students programming. And she also presented some, some stats which were like mind blowing. So <laughs> I took, that was really inspiring for me. And I thought, okay, maybe I can take something from here and do uh, and work on it, and I think she did say in her in her talk like one kid at a time. So that's where the kind of the title came from. Um, and then I want uh, my my eventual goal is to take a well built curriculum and resources uh, to non profit organizations um, uh, across the world. So I work with a non profit organization in India, and they are for rural children who do not have any computing um, resources available. So one of the goals here is to t try to take that back to them and contribute. Um, and then I was just mentioning that I'm a STEM advocate at work, so, uh, <clears throat> so, so that's another thing, how to encourage um, a love of science in, in, in the younger children. I attended a workshop and they talked about the six C's, um, which is collaboration, communication, content, 
critical thinking, creative innovation, and confidence. So these are all words, but I think the main focus is on content, where uh, we have to try to make the content that's a visual aid that children can grasp uh, and, um, and follow up. So I think Scratch did a great job with it. Somehow make Python that simple that children can pick it up. Um, so, so how to do that? So when I started my journey two years ago, I actually, um, I actually um, took a f uh, this after school thing sounded promising. So um, I jumped up on that and uh, I started with a group of six children who were fourth to sixth grade. And we just had a classroom setting. Um, so basically in that setting, it was the whiteboard, uh, some handouts that I created at home and um, six laptops that I configured with Ubuntu and, and Python uh, and Idle. Uh, and added a few things like Scratch and other things in there. Um, so, as you can see, those two pictures, like children were really excited. More, they they looked at this more um, as a fun experiment, and and you know they were very happy drawing um, graphics with turtles and um, and also just like printing their names a thousand times, those kind of things. <laughs> so. So um, the beginner curriculum kept it really simple. Uh, I had one hour a week. Um, I conducted eight sessions and uh, kept it really simple and to the grade level. So basically touched on math concepts, shapes, addition, subtraction. We were able to do word problems, which was great. So uh, that's what they understand. So we had strings and numerals concatenated, and then we would do the arithmetic on the numerals, uh, which worked out really well. Um, they were happy that somebody else is doing the calculation for them. Uh, <laughs> Then we did languages, uh, strings and string operations. Um, so adding strings and slicing and dicing was the favorite. So they would take a name and then slice it and make funny words out of it and then share it with the rest of the group. Um, drawing was a big hit with turtle, especially with colors, um, you know, coming up with different, different um, type of patterns. Uh, we actually ended up doing some data types, which, which was not my initial uh, goal. So I was very happy about that. Uh, we did talk a little bit about lists and dictionary. And I think at any time, it was important to bring the concepts to their level. So with a list, I would tell them like a checklist or you know back to school list. And that's how they would be more excited about learning about lists. Um, and then the dictionary, the same thing. You're a student and you're in uh, grade one. These are your best friends. You know, that, that kind of um, uh, anal uh, any time I was going to get, uh, was able to give them an analogy with their present environment, they were able to connect easily. Um, and we ended up with writing a script that prints their name, so, which was all, also exciting. Um, the tools that I used were, um, I mentioned these already, these were, these were all the tools that we used initially. So uh, the, challenges, the challenges were that I had six computers and I was, um, I was sharing them with the children. The first thing was, uh, I had to set those up. And, and uh, so finding time and trying to set those up and upgrade them and add further is, is challenging and time consuming. Finding a space to teach, as always, um, was, was um, a difficult, especially with the Wi-Fi. And uh, <clears throat> the out of class availability. So a lot of feedback that I got from some of the parents was, it's great that they are working in class, but they have no place to practice this. And they talk a lot about this at home, but we are not equipped to to provide them that, um, provide them a platform. Um, and then I didn't have volunteers. So it was also, so all added up to the list. And then, uh, then came Minecraft and um, the kids were really excited about, about doing, uh, working with Minecraft. But again, I got limited with resources because the only way to work with Minecraft, as we know today is the Minecraft Pi that comes with Raspberry Pi. And again, I didn't have the resources to get enough Raspberry Pis and setups uh, where I could, it was portable enough that I could set it up anywhere and, um, and uh, you know, the kids can could work with that. So, so um, given all these challenges, um, I came across a project on GitHub, uh, which, is, uh, which was started by uh, Koda Dojo Twin Cities, and it is the Canary, um, Canary Minecraft server. Uh, so that came to my rescue. Uh, and earlier this year, I set up this, um, this uh, Canary server and the Twin Cities model, so to speak, um, on, uh, on the cloud. So basically what, what happened here was um, there was a server that actually runs the Minecraft server. And this is a, mod this is a server that um, you can play with Python. Uh, you, uh, it's not a closed server. So 
<coughs> and then this this uh, configuration also hosts the Python notebook server or the Jupyter server. And now what I need per student is just a laptop and a web browser and a Minecraft account. And I'm good to go. So I don't have any other setup that I need. Um, and the simple setup allows me to now, uh, now uh, I set up a local um, setup here, but it's the same analogy. There is a server on Amazon Cloud. And as long as you have an account on Mojang, um, you can log in with that account on your local computer and then uh, launch it in multiplayer mode. Um, connect to that server and use your IPython notebook to send commands to that server. And you have a working uh, Minecraft server with Python, which is a lot of fun. So, so that was what we achieved over the last six months. Um, so this gave me an idea of, um, of uh, uh, extending the Jupyter notebook one step further. And that's where PyKid was born. Um, so with, Pi, with PyKid, um, I do not propose taking away the classroom learning. Uh, I think it's very, very important that that one C is very important, which is collaboration and which is one-on-one uh, -on -one teaching. Uh, what I'm saying is just making it easier for, for teachers to teach. So uh, there, is, there is the engineer and then there is the educator. I'm trying to bridge that, grip, uh, that gap because I do not expect every educator to be able to do complex setups and take them to students and start teaching. So, so, it, so this uh, PyKit just aims to make that easier. Uh, what, what I'm doing here is harnessing the power of Jupyter, which is a great project, and, um, and using, uh, making it uh, to become an easily available resource. Um, this will enable out-of-class availability, and, and uh, we are also providing a blog uh, that the students can communicate and share, which is collaboration, sharing, and confidence. So, <clears throat> so what, what this does is, this is the setup for, for the PyKit server right now. Uh, I'm using an, uh, an Amazon Cloud instance, and uh, the, I'm using Temp NB, which is a temporary notebook server at this point. Uh, this is also available on GitHub, um, thanks to an, everybody who's putting these cool projects out there. And uh, this server also runs a WordPress instance. Um, so any user that logs in creates an account, uh, not, need not create an account, but uh, the students will create an account and be able to uh, blog their entries and use this, this um, temporary notebook server and get notebook sessions where they can go and practice and then share a snippet and save those, um, save those uh, notebook files and share it with the class. So um, I'm using temporary notebooks here. So these are only temporary sessions. You really can't save your sessions here and go back to it. So that is something that I want to change in the next step. Uh, but right now, right now, this is what we are. Uh, this is what the children are um, getting. Um, so I, I have a few uh, demos that I'll go over um, after this. But I can. I'll just uh, go over the next steps now. So, so now that we have the setup for PyKid, the next steps are over the summer we have been doing a pilot with a few children who are just um, trying this out and seeing how they like, how much they like it. I'm trying to prepare the, the, notebook, uh, the notebooks, um, the curriculum that the students can use as a guidance. And uh, we are hoping that uh, with the new school year beginning, there'll be student signups. Um, so the next steps are to more note notebooks for kids. Uh, I have to still implement the Canary server on EC2, the Minecraft server. And then the next step is to use Jupyter Hub that enables um, uh, you to save your sessions, create logins so that you can have your, the students can have their notebooks uh, there and easy, easy to share. It is a much complex infrastructure. I'm working through that. So any help um, coming from the community is most welcome. Uh, and it also needs money. So I'm trying to apply to PSF for a grant. So, so those are the challenges um, at present. Um, so I want to I want to just say at the very end that uh, the most important takeaway is to teach um, is is uh, to teach and also have fun doing that. Uh, it's a lot of fun with children. Anybody who has that mindset, please um, you know uh, please join Pi Kids and and help us out here. I'm looking for volunteers, to, so please contact me. Um, so I'll just go through uh, the sites that I mentioned here. So. So, um, oh, there's no internet connection. Is there a, yeah. sorry. Okay.
I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong one, I think, here. So, um, so here is a little read, uh, read the docs that explains a little bit what, what PyKids is doing. Um, so it's a voluntary effort to bring uh, Python to K to 12 students. Uh, we have our blog available here. It's, it's just started, so uh, <coughs> right now it contains a few links about, um, about a collection of Jupyter notebooks that are available, um, and uh, then just some links on how, how the children can get started. Um, and then uh, I'm hoping that some local classes and meetups come through this. So not only in East, uh, not only in Bay Area, but in other cities too. This resource is open to everyone, so they can go and use the blog and the, and the website and create their temporary notebooks and share it. Um, we also have a, a GitHub account, um, which is here. So there is a GitHub um, repository right there, which, uh, which has all of the lessons here. So at this point, there, is, there are some uh, notebooks available for Python 3 that children can start working on. And, uh, and they are pretty interactive. I'm already getting feedback on this. So when I put this together, um, I put all of the statements in one block, and I'm already getting feedback from students. It'll be nice to have a line on its own so that we can just experiment with one line at a time. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's good, um, because I didn't think like that. I thought, OK, this would be good to run as a block. And there are some exercises at the bottom that they can try out. Um, so this is the pattern that, that I'm using currently. Um, and I can show you one of the sessions how we, how we are working on that. So, so here is the temporary notebook. So you, you can click on this link, and you get this temporary space. Uh, what I do is I clone the, I've cloned the GitHub repository, so I just upload uh, one of the notebooks right here. Open that out, and I have, I have that right here. So now I can, I can go to the notebook, and the students can use this as a guide and uh, you know, then start experimenting with their own statements. Um, and then they can go and save it and export it and um, save it locally for them, themselves to view later. So they can always go back and import it here uh, in a temporary session. Um, and then uh, last but not the least, I'll show you a small demo on, on how to use uh, the Canary server. I have got a small setup here. So please bear with me as I set that up. So here is the, here is the um, repository that Coda Dojo has provided us. And um, just have to do a simple vagrant up. Let's see if it works. I'm not sure if it will work because <laughs> I shut it off. So. Looks like it won't. It's not up. <laughs> Um, okay, so that doesn't, let me see what's going on here, sorry. Hmm. I just need to start this container, sorry. Okay, maybe we'll have better luck now. Is it working? <laughs> That's the fun with Docker. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So meanwhile, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask me. Okay, there is some problem, sorry. <laughs> but I'm not lying, and this is what it looks like. <laughs> Never rely on Wi-Fi at a conference. Mm -hmm. Well, I would be interested in finding a little more detail on how you want to support 
great. Thank you so much. So we should definitely connect after the conference. Yeah. What I'm looking, I'm, I'm actually looking for is um, content for the notebooks. So um, just how to make it simpler for children to follow. Uh, that's the goal. I mean, we all know how to do cool stuff with Python, but how to make it simpler. That's the goal. So um, I have to say that uh, they, f uh, they find it, they really find it easy to use Python. Um, I don't know what other languages um, are being taught out there, but the feedback that I get is, this is like English. And uh, so I think the children find it easy. Um, they love seeing the, they love seeing, uh, like for example, the word problems that I was talking about. They said, okay, what's the next thing we can do? Can we do algebra with this? And uh, you know, uh, and, and of course Minecraft. So, Definitely, there is a lot of excitement. They like the visual part a lot. So if you are building a website, they love it. So if you, if you can um, you know, show them the simple trick with Python and, and uh, just with one command run a website, they love those kind of things. So anytime they feel that, okay, I can make a blog, my, my own blog or my own little application, um, they always want to do that. How do you use this to, to do that? And I think it's simple enough in Python to tell them, you can use a web browser and create your own little blog out there. So. Yeah, so um, that is a very good question. And this is where um, the struggle is on how to take it to the next step. Like for example, with data types and, and containers, how to explain those concepts to them. So I have been trying to, um, uh, to somehow uh, make the analogy with what they understand. So the thing, the first day when, uh, the, in the first lesson we talked about programming, and if you talk about programming as a steps, um, as certain steps of an algorithm that lead you to a certain end, they will, it's very dry for them. So I, I, the way I um, uh, took the analogy was baking a cookie. So we had the ingredients, we had all the steps, and then we had the final recipe, and then we put everything in the oven and the cookies came out. So when I was able to um, uh, relate every step with something that they do in their daily life, that's when the, that's when the uh, connection happens. But it's hard. It's hard to understand how to explain those concepts to them in that way. So that's the challenge, I think, of creating a curriculum that children can follow. Yeah. The PyKids read the doc sites references to the Kodo Dojo. Uh, they have a very, very elaborate uh, instructions on how to set up and create those. Yeah, I just, th those. Not yet. Very nice. Yeah. That's great. And I'll, I'll look for, I'll ping you on that one. So. <laughs>
Right. So, yeah. So I think the one which Canary uses is MCPI, the MCPI. So it gives you certain API methods that you can use. Um, so I know that, I, I mean, I have not yet uh, delved a lot into that where you can uh, create like uh, words and characters, but they, they can create their own characters. I think that's where it becomes interesting for them to be able to script out a character and then save that character and uh, bring back their mods and then show it to other friends and share. Um, so. So that's where it would become interesting, but um, it's still an API. It gives you some methods. It's like the turtle, the same thing. You know, it can run or it can draw and it can draw a circle. Those kind of. It's still very high level, uh, but it still gives them an idea of how a script is written or if you run a script, you know, this this happens. So more is definitely needed here. Um, if you follow some of the uh, some of the tutorials that uh, Raspberry Pi gives you, they are also pretty pretty um, small in in terms of what can you do with your world and what can you save there. So I think we still have a long way to go here and see what all can we do with Minecraft. Yeah. 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 No, I don't even I don't even go there. I don't even go there. I don't even go to those um, those kind of concepts at all yet. And this is the struggle that I was uh, telling you. Like, how do you move to? And maybe th maybe it's okay not to go into that level yet. Just show them what the end result is, and then they slowly delve into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, so uh, we. I am going to start. So, I'm currently focused in, in East Bay. Uh, this is in the Fremont School District. Um, so, we are going to start collaborative classes um, pretty soon. And uh, then, it, then I'm hoping that other uh, school districts will pick this up. Um, I can definitely travel around East, uh, around Bay Area, and, and give some of the classes. Which, uh, which, and I'm hoping more people will join the fun. So uh, this particular platform is just uh, for outreach so that people can share ideas. I recently, I went to uh, PyCon um, this year and there were people from other states who wanted, wanted to start something similar. So if people from everywhere are communicating and collaborating, then we can at least um, uh, build common ground and understand what, what children want and what they, under, what, what they learn easily. I think the bigger challenge for all educators is how, how to make it easy enough for them to learn, especially at this young age. You know, I have not, I have not thought that far, but that's a great idea. Like this blocks. I mean, I want to use something that people can use uh, offline in a very easy way. I don't have to ask them. Okay, you go and buy a Raspberry Pi and say have this set up at home. So whatever can work through the through this medium of Jupyter notebooks, um, I think that's the best way to uh, put content out there. And and definitely this, if this can be integrated, this is a very good project to to do. Yeah. I'd like to thank you.